quite impressed with our doctor's surgery having free Wi-Fi. That's really good when you're a mental workaholic like me and need to keep cracking on with work during the waiting time. But it is good, it means I don't waste any time. I was sat there able to finish off the Dexter Gordon bit, do a little bit of emails, catch up on a few things. This case does make a huge difference to what I take around. Anyway, enough of all that. Day 13 of our Sax Advent calendar and we're going to focus on a guy who, well, I remember saying this is a man who seriously doesn't have any hang-ups about himself because he was sure enough of himself to marry Charlie Parker's widow even though he was a saxophone player. We're of course talking about <laughs> Deliveries. I'll tell you about Phil Woods in a minute. Been waiting for these for a little while. That's a Christmas present for my mum, I think. So back to Phil Woods. Phil Woods, I first heard Phil Woods on the Billy Joel recording, Just The Way You Are. Because for me, that is still one of the greatest saxophone solos in any genre, especially as a pop recording. There's so many, there's great musical ideas in there. It's just a great solo. It's perfect for the song for which it is played. You know, the song tells you what to play on a recording and Phil Woods is certainly, on that recording, really engaged with the song. Now what I said about Phil Woods having clearly no hang-ups about himself or about Charlie Parker is that he actually married Charlie Parker's widow. Well, Charlie Parker's partner, it was kind of debatable whether Chan and Bird ever got married. But certainly, I mean, you know, there's a guy who's got some self-confidence if he's able to <laughs> move on from that as well as being a saxophone player and clearly in debt to Charlie Parker, as he was, and he openly acknowledged. And so a lot of people kind of always have Charlie Parker and Phil Woods, which is it is difficult to do because, you know, trying to come after one of the greatest geniuses of the 20th century, certainly one of the few geniuses, real geniuses in jazz in Bird, is very, very difficult to do. Born in 1931 in Springfield, Massachusetts, not the Simpsons one, um, Phil Woods took up the clarinet at age 12 and then in his later teens took up the saxophone. You're hearing that story a lot, aren't you, with these people? He first studied music formally at the Manhattan School of Music and then went on to Juilliard, but he wasn't able to take the saxophone as his main instrument at Juilliard because I think back then they weren't offering the course, so he took his major as a clarinet major at Juilliard School of Music. While he was at Juilliard, he was playing with a lot of big bands, coming to a lot of people's attention. In fact, there's a great video, which sadly I don't think is on YouTube anymore, where Phil Woods talks about playing in some strip club down 7th Avenue, and uh, he said it was such a classy joint that you, know, you used to get given your own hammer to bang for your stripper. Anyway, he knew Bird was playing across the road, and Phil Woods said he just wasn't happy with his instrument that day. You know, we've always had those. It's kind of, ah oh, man, the saxophone sounds bad, the reed sounds bad, the mouthpiece is wrong, ligatures wrong man as Phil Wood says in the story even the strap sounded wrong and anyway he went over to Charlie Parker and said Bird my saxophone's not playing too well Bird picks out the saxophone plays it beautifully he said Phil Wood said he levitated across 7th Avenue uh, went back to the club and he learned that actually the secret was not to keep changing the instrument the mouthpiece etc the secret was to practice thankfully for Phil Woods and the rest of us he moved on from playing strip joints and got a gig with Dizzy Gillespie who he toured the world with and it was with Dizzy that he really realized Maybe big band music wasn't for him and he went back to playing and recording in a more uh, small band setup with normally trumpet and alto sax. And some of the albums I've put on there on this playlist sort of highlight Phil Wood's great small group playing. Now in the 50s and 60s, Phil Woods worked with the likes of Herbie Hancock, Ron Carter, Buddy Rich, lots of the jazz greats. But in 1968, he moved with Chan to Paris where he kind of became obviously again a major scene a major person on the European scene and you're starting to again probably notice quite a lot about these guys in the 70s the states wasn't kind of the place for a lot of these jazz saxophone players particularly they came uh, over to Europe and made their home in Europe while in Europe Phil Woods played with an awful lot of avant-garde music kind of got into a, an electric avant-garde band never really took off though and it was kind of 77 I think was when he recorded the Billy Joel thing and then things started he came back to the states and you know he kind of backed to recording uh, some great records. Those records of the 80s of Phil Woods for me stand out as some of the greatest jazz albums in that decade. There are some albums that I'm not able to get onto the players like Bob Stew um, and what was the other one? Um, Flash. That's also not on Apple Music. Maybe it's on Spotify. If you can find it on Spotify please let the rest of us know. Put a link below uh, in the things. Um, but he then moved into jazz education, a bit like Dave Liebman, although Woods is a little older. He kind of realised that um, because he had had this 
he you know he w studied with Parker or kind of had heard Parker and knew Parker uh, and those jazz greats that it needed the baton need to be passed on to the next generation so he took his work as a teacher very very seriously um, I know friends of mine who were playing with National Youth Jazz Orchestra had uh, this is in Britain in London had some workshops with Phil Woods said they were great and Phil Woods really put a lot into those kind of playing there is a sonata for Phil Woods which I'm sure Phil actually played unlike the Stan Getz one uh, which uh, some of my students have done for uh, second year recitals at Cambridge. It's a great piece. Again, it still gets a little bit. Uh, I think it is written by Phil Woods, isn't it? I can't remember. I'll be checked. Of course, it's written by Phil, or composed, I should say, by Phil. Great, great piece. It's been a few years since we've actually um, done it. Wow. Should have a look through that myself today, actually, if I get a chance to practice. Today's been a very busy day, uh, as well as trying to get a haircut as well, sorted, which I've not been able to do because of the continuity on that film. Uh, students have been filming their Christmas projects. <laughs> It's just been crazy, 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 crazy. So check out those Phil Woods playlists. Make sure you um, share them around, as I've said before. Uh, I need to go and do the school run now, and then I've got a little bit more teaching to do tonight, and we'll hopefully be able to... I'll try and play some of this uh, Phil Woods can, uh, sonata for you if I get a chance, and if it actually sounds reasonable, because it's a while since I've looked at it. Click and collect shopping always seems like a good idea, but one, I often forget what I needed to order because I'm often doing it in a rush on the iPad. And B, it takes so long to collect it here. You may as well have done it yourself. Anyway, enough of a whingy moan. Um, you okay, you two? Mm -hmm. Back for their school play tonight, which I saw yesterday, so they've got to get straight back to school uh, not long off. And I've got a student in Luxembourg, someone coming to the studio, and then a student in the States. It's so busy all day, and I'll edit this for you guys. So not quite sure exactly what we'll put on the Phil Woods, but what I will do now is listen to the Phil Woods playlist before I send it over, which is what I've been doing with a lot of these playlists. It's really handy for me just to... I know all the tracks, obviously, I'm giving you. I'm not blindly hitting that, but it's nice to be able to have those tracks to be able to, uh, to listen to. tempo change. <laughs> I love this performance instruction here. I've never seen it in any other piece. Players should think free jazz, a la Eric Dolphy. Let yourself go crazy. Okay. Really enjoying playing through this full wood sonata. It's just a pity it's so late at night and I'm gonna to have to uh, pause my practice there till tomorrow. If you are an advanced player, you know, if you've sort of gone through the grades and you're uh, moving on, I'd highly recommend uh, that um, Phil Wood's sonata to have a look at. Apologies, I didn't realise he'd written it. Kind of, because obviously with the Richard Rodney Bennett got me a bit confused with the Stan Getz one. Anyway, that's uh, all we've got time for today. I hope you've enjoyed uh, that little look at Phil Woods. Please do check out more. I don't pretend to be an expert on Phil Woods. These little advent calendars are just to open doors, give you a playlist, uh, get you listening to more different, you know, more different. Get you listening to more saxophone players of different ones that you will maybe not heard before. Tomorrow is a very different saxophone player. Most of you will have probably heard of this gentleman, but very different from all the ones that I've spoken about before. So maybe he takes some guesses as to who it is. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure you check out yesterday's uh, vlog episode here, and this is what I was up to this time last year. But most of all, hit that subscribe button. We've passed the 4,000 subscribers without me realizing it. Thank you so much. Uh, it means such a, a lot to me to have that. So I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Good night. Bye bye.